So, it's been a year at business on purpose for me. And the one thing I can honestly say is it's been a roller coaster. So, what are the four things that have truly just stopped me in my tracks this year? Well, let's talk about that today. Happy Monday, friends. Thomas Joyner here with Business on Purpose. Coaching 20 plus businesses, writing new content, helping clients put out fires, hiring new employees, manage supply chain shortages, opening a new office in Nashville, you name it. It's been a challenging year here to say the least. Tons and tons and tons of new things that I didn't think I would be getting into. And yet here I am. So with all that, there have been a few things that have stuck out with me. A few things that fundamentally change the way I view work and are things that I will carry with me for years to come. I wanted to share them with you, not to brag about all that I've learned, but to offer you the chance to kind of sit, to marinate on them with me. Maybe learn something and figure out if, if you can change your perception just a little bit. Maybe they push you to tweak the way that you do things and grow in your ways. We should always be growing, always learning, and I hope that as this stirs your mind in a way that you can process, you'll be able to act on whatever you're challenged by, to be different, to be better tomorrow than you are today. So, the four major lessons I've learned from the past year. Number one, you must know your why. I've said it here 50 times, but knowing your why, we have to start here. I've seen it over and over again. Business owners that don't know their why end up one of two places. They either burn out in the process of chasing their goals, just bored and, and exhausted from kind of this mundane day-to-day, -day. no true fire in their belly to storm the next hill, but just going through the motions because their work is not attached to anything. Or they end up in another place. They accomplish their goals and they kind of survey the scene and realize that it's not all that it's cracked up to be. They look around and they realize that this goal is only meaningful if they grow next year or if they get bigger next year because the goal had no why behind it. And so it felt completely empty at the end. I had a lunch uh, with a business owner last week who had some huge, big goals, growth, expansion, new locations, and I was excited for him. I'm a dreamer at heart. I love listening to other people's dreams. And after he finished telling me about what he hoped for in his business, he made a profound statement. He looked at me and he said, I've got to figure out why I want to do all that though. I was kind of shocked that he went there. And I asked him to kind of explain what he meant by that. And he said, well, I know that if I accomplish all that, there's just going to be more goals on the other side of it. And then it's going to feel really empty if I don't create spaces for people to meet, places for people to work and provide for their family, and a place for community to come together. That's it. That's everything. That's his why. And when the why is firmly in place, it frees you up to chase after your goals, knowing that there's more behind it than just money and growth. Don't forget that and know your why. Second lesson, there are no bad teams, only bad leaders. If you've read Jocko Willink's book, Extreme Ownership, you know that this is one of his main points, right? This may seem harsh. Well, Thomas, you don't know my team. You're right. I don't know your team, but I've seen time after time over the past year when a leader in a business takes extreme ownership, believing that every shortcoming in her business lands squarely on his shoulders, it frees his team up to operate at peak efficiency. Why? Because now the owner takes it upon himself to train and train some more and then retrain. They take it upon themselves to listen to their team, learn from them, and lead them towards a common goal. They build processes to free their team up from questioning every move and they delegate them authority for decision making to develop leaders on their teams. See, I've watched teams go from barely functioning, barely getting by to absolutely crushing it as the owner decided to finally lead instead of just getting by. It's a beautiful thing to watch when a person takes that ownership. They don't just pass the blame, but they view it as their sole responsibility to make their team and help their team succeed. That's what leads to high functioning teams. Now that weight's heavy, right? The responsibility of running a business is heavy, but it's one that should never rest on the shoulders of your team. It's too heavy for them. But when you shoulder the load, when you train your team and equip them to do their job, it leads to a business functioning, functioning exactly the way that it should. Third lesson, whether you believe you can do something or believe you can't do something, either way, you're right. It all starts with belief. I love this quote. Somebody told me this years ago, and I've seen it over and over this year, and it's why we start with vision. If we can see it, if we can believe it, it becomes possible. But the moment we doubt, and the moment that we think it can't be done right here in our minds, we lower our ceiling, and we seal our fate. 
Because belief and positivity are such powerful forces in our business. Our teams need to know we believe in them and believe that they can get the job done. Our team needs to know where they're headed and feel the belief that we can actually get there. It's not just a pipe dream, but it has to be a part of your culture. Many times we, without even realizing it, put this ceiling on our business by the way we communicate with our team. But when we set the bar high, when we equip our team to perform, constantly review the goals and show our belief that we will get there, the impossible becomes possible. This leads me to the last lesson. It ties directly in with number three. Number four, there are no shortcuts to success. The difference in my clients who are just knocking it out of the park and the ones who are just kind of getting by and still wondering why they haven't picked up momentum is directly correlated to the amount of work they put in. It's that simple. There's no shortcut to success. I was watching uh, some stuff with Elon Musk recently. It just makes me laugh when I heard him say this. He said, people always ask how I became an overnight success. I tell them I became an overnight success by working 16-hour days for 10 years. It's so true. There's no such thing as an overnight success. There's no shortcut because behind every successful business is someone who put in the work. Don't believe the lie that you can just cut the corners and anyone that's selling you or telling you that is lying to you. In fact, every time I have a sales meeting with a new business, they always get around to asking me, Thomas, what's BOP's secret sauce? Why, why do the businesses that work with you guys keep getting better and growing? Because people are taking notice that they're growing. And so the first thing I tell them is that there's no magic wand. And if there was a magic wand to make everything better, we would charge a ton more money for our coaching. If you could just wave it, make everything better, we would charge a lot more. But no, the second thing I tell them is that we hold all of our clients to a high standard. We hold them accountable to putting in the work every single week. And if they tell us they don't want to put in the work, we tell them that we may not be the right fit as their business coach because there's no shortage, there's no shortcut, to success. It's hours of training, hours of implementing, and hours of work before the business gets to the point that it's made it. But you know what? Even the businesses that have made it are still working hard day after day behind the scenes to stay there because somebody's always gunning for their spot. So that's year one in the books with BOP. Take these lessons. Think about them a bit today. Ask yourself, where do we stand with each of them and allow them to make you better like they have me? Here's them one more time. Number one, you must know your why. Number two, there's no bad teams, only bad leaders. Number three, whether you can, whether you believe you can do something or believe you can't, you're right either way. And number four, there's no shortcut to success. Those are them. Great. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you want more content, make sure to follow us on YouTube, subscribe to our podcast, There's some amazing stuff on there. And as always, we'd love to hear from you. Hope you have a great week. Thanks so much. Thanks for tuning in.